Welcome to the Adornance Podcast, episode 15. Small projects, big rewards, lots of points. Woo! <laughs> Can you tell? Where is it? I don't know. I need it. I'll be this right is my second cup of the day. And my wonderful knit happy mug that I got from Zulily. I don't know if they're still making them, but they're still offering them. But I love the color inside. I got to pick. And I said red. I'm sure I said red. I would not have said orange, but I got orange. So it goes with the season, right? So pumpkin spice. Mmm, delicious, right? All things. So today's show is going to have some new cast-ons, some whips, finished objects. I don't think I'm going to do a yarn review. I have it, but I don't, I'm going to hold that. Um, knit along updates, crafty bingo updates, dream knitting, shop talk, additions, Rhinebeck talk. Oh, it's going to be great. All right, here we go. Okay, <laughs> let's jump in. How do you like my 80s-tastic hair? I know, I got some height going on here. <laughs> There's been some serious color issues with my hair lately, so um, I'm glad to be back to... Color I am. I got color oops from Amazon to fix the color, so this is fixed. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, but on to knitting. So the Barocha socks by Knitters Brewing Company. I knit the first one. It's the middle of the month. What is it? It's October, October 17th. So I cast off last night. I need to cast on for the next one and get going on that because this is for the Desert Vista Dye Works Sock of the Month Club. And this is my first one and I love it. And I followed the instructions for her heel. I haven't even tried these on to be honest. And I'm wearing really tight jeans. I'm not gonna try and get my foot up and put this on, but I know it'll fit. It fits my blocker quite well. So, um, yeah, so the heel construction was fun, different from my normal heel flap and gusset that I like to do. Um, I think it's a German short row heel, shape heel. Uh, she doesn't say what it is. That's what it reminded me of. Okay, so fun, fun, fun. And let me just turn it so you can see. Don't look at the leg part of the sock, just look at the foot part because this stitch with the stripes is so fun. I do have to keep my notebook with me, not my notebook, my you know, instructions with me um, because it's hard for me to keep track of or to see where I am. But unlike normal for me, that does not bother me. I'm fine with that. I just know that this is not like grab and take along. It's more of a, okay, I'm gonna sit and knit for half an hour. Okay, put my paper, let's go. So I knit these on size zeros, which is what I normally knit with. Have I told you I'm completely in love with these? These are the best needles ever. The Chai goes, oh my God. So zeros on that. Um, here's the skein of yarn if you're curious. And I do a little bit of color management around the heel. I typically wind up two color repeats, break it, set it aside, and then I have that to work the heel section. I'm not gonna use that all up on the second sock, but at least that way I can make the match. So that's my sock. The next new cast on, which you may or may not, I don't know, you haven't. Okay, so last time I received the Fibernet Dye Works Birds of Prey colorway and I said I was gonna cast on a hat or a cowl. I don't have the instructions. Well, I'll type it out what it is. I believe this is the Waffle Cowl by Kate Carter Evans, something. Anyways, um, I'll link it. This is so much fun. It's a free pattern and um, I just, I love it. It's magic. It is magic the way this works. It's a free pattern and it's ribbing, but it's not. Like I don't really like ribbing. Um, it's just so fun to knit. So I'm gonna knit the whole skein and then the cowl itself, it wraps and has buttons. So <laughs> it's going pretty fast for the amount of yarn I have left, but we'll see, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. I'll make the other end skinny if I need to, but it's so much fun. So this is uh, Lisa Fiber Nymph Dye Works. I think it's cozy. Her cozy base, I'm not, I'm not 100% certain. Birds of prey, play, play, 
P-L-A-Y. It is the exclusive pigskin party color. So I'll get some points for that. So another project scoring me lots of points that makes me super excited. And my needles here are sixes, sixes. And I'm using uh, Knitter's Pride carbons. And did you know if you have Knit Picks or Knitter's Pride, Amazon sells the cords really, really ridiculously cheap. If you need to buy some cords, go look on Amazon because I have plenty of tips. I run out of cords, so. And this, I'm just gonna show you because I can't, I can't, I can't even. So my mom made this bag and she was disappointed with it, right? I think it's completely adorable. It has all these pockets on the outside so I can shove a phone, I can shove a pen, I can shove notes, pattern, there's pockets on the side. I think it's so cute and it zips at the top. I put a little pull on it or you can fold that down and let the zip ride inside. Super sturdy. I think this should go on the shop. Let me know what you think down below if you think this style of bag is a good bag for knitters. I love it. I've been using it, carrying it. It's, it's a good on the go bag for sure. So that's my cute little bag. Um, <clears throat> the next new cast on that I have is this. So October interception for pigskin party imaginary points again was uh, two colors knitting two color cast on. Oh, here's the fiber nib. It is cozy base. Okay, so where is it? I'm everywhere all the time shifting my projects around to whatever I need for a go bag at the time. They're like moving into that bag for a go bag. Like I brought this out to a bar. I didn't really want to bring this to a bar. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So back in 2011, I had a little baby Roland and uh, there was this color work cowl that included six colors of, I'm not going to get the name of the yarn right. Why Stephanie? I think it's, Bam wool, wool bam. Anyways, I used up one of the colors already. But I had knit these, right? So it's a DK or worsted maybe, worsted weight yarn. And it was this beautiful colored, no, that's not the right term, um, cowl that I knit. And it was knit on threes and fours and it was super tight and yeah, it was beautiful. I just followed what the pattern had said for needle size, but I couldn't fit it over my head. I knit the, so I set it aside. I was like, okay, maybe I'll stick it. And then I followed the instructions for fingerless mitt. I couldn't even get like three fingers into the fingerless mitt. 2011, I'd been knitting for about seven, eight years at that point, but mommy brain, I don't know, I just, I kept knitting it because I love the way those colors look together, even if it was the project itself wasn't working out for me. Um, and it's a classic elite yarn, wool bamboo, B-A-M-B-O-O. -O. It's since been discontinued, but I pulled those out because it's a color work that the, um, I had thrown away the mitts, but I thrown everything away actually, just kept the yarn right? Cut it off through away. I didn't want to rip it out. Didn't want to mess with that. So I pulled it out thinking, okay, someone's already put these colors together and thought about how nice they look. And I really do still love those colors together and want the cowl. So I pulled out, surprise, surprise, teal, dark teal, because that's me, and the pale blue color. And I did the two color cast on according to I Rock Knits, Corey. I watched her video, super helpful on YouTube on how to do this new to me cast on. Um, it's basically a tricky long tail cast on, just a little bit different and it gets you that braided kind of, that's not a good spot to show it, braided look. So really neat. And then last week I had gotten a new pattern and so it was top of mind. This is the Kermea cowl by Sarah Jordan. So I had received this in a kit from Fibernef Dye Works, but uh, she had some, she had her yarn in it. But I thought, I want to knit with this. I'm going to use that pattern on this. So I did. And I have to say, it came out pretty darn nice. I went up to size seven needles. I believe that's what 
the new cowl pattern called for. And so I went up to size sevens, I know. And I did a nice corrugated rib to begin with. Yes, the pattern called for that, but I was doing, so I cast on before I picked out the pattern and I got through the corrugated rib and I was like, okay, if I'm gonna get this project done by the end of October, I gotta pick a pattern. So that's how this yarn paired up with that pattern. I already had the yarn on the go. And I love it, I love it, love it, love it. Of course the teal, teal is my favorite, aqua, whatever you call that dark color, right? It's my favorite color and so I wanted that as the base but then I ran out I only had one skein this yarn is discontinued I looked in people's stashes and I wasn't so happy I googled it and Google took me to Etsy to a I'm gonna assume she's a yarn seller of sorts at a shop or something and she had 10 skeins of a teal not the same teal like this is dark teal and the other one was like antique teal she had 10 skeins of it. I would love a sweater in this yarn. Can I tell you that? It's so drapey. It's so beautiful. Like it doesn't need to be color work, although it could have a color work yoke. So I bought the 10 skeins. I know. What am I doing, Stephanie? But I had subbed in when I ran out of the teal. I didn't want to stop knitting. I kept going and I went with this uh, asparagus colored yarn and I really don't like it. And even if it's at the bottom, it's gonna bother me. So I'm going to, when the new tail gets here, if it's good to go, if it's close enough of a match that I don't think it'll be jarring on the eye, I'm gonna rip back past the asparagus and then pick up with that tail. So that's my plan. So this has been cast on, it's knit all this way and now it's on hold. Isn't it beautiful? I know. So Rhinebeck, I'm going. Ooh, ooh, ooh. More on that at the end, but yeah, the wool, the yarn is not gonna be here in time for me to wear this to Rhinebeck, so that's okay. I have another cowl hat cowl set, and I did put a pom-pom on the top of my birds and ships, so it looks really cute. It's a faux fur. Um, yeah, so that's in here, and that's so wonderful. I'm loving it. Super quick project, and racking up the points, of course, of course, because I think Sarah Jordan is one of the pattern designers for the pigskin party, and it's an interception. Anyways, okay. Uh, next new cast on is, so I am on the team Nimble Gnomes, so I needed to knit a mascot type pattern, and this is a free pattern that's called Nimble. They're fingerless mitts, and um, they'll count for my team, Nimble Gnomes. And I had this yarn from Webbs called Sheffield, and so this will count towards a player's name on my bingo, and it's really great yarn. It's, um, do I have the tag? It has some amount of silk and angora in it. It's, so you see the little halo on it? Yeah, it's really super soft. So I pulled out some Felici, because that's a really soft yarn, and I don't always like to make it into footwear, because it can be um, a bit, Billy, at least for me, at my gauges. So here's the first one. And I followed the pattern, needle size, everything. I do have big hands, I will say that, although they're getting smaller. But uh, there's the first one. So it's a cute little, just a little quick, I think I knit it in the afternoon, fingerless mitt. I added on this thumb and I didn't do such a great job picking up stitches there. So there's gotta be some sewing. I. This is gonna be too small for me to wear, right? I mean, that doesn't work. But Tristan's teacher is about five feet tall. She's a very petite woman. I think these will work for her. Cause I had, you know, my friend Lauren, right? My BFF, I talk about her all the time. She and Roland, their feet are like half an inch apart. They're almost the same size. So their hands must be almost the same size. Lauren and Tristan's teacher are about the same size. So one, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> by the transitive property, if these fit Roland, they will fit Tristan's teacher. So I had Roland put them on and I did a little bit extra in the length just um, to make sure it got to the first knuckles, thinking that these would be good for recess. And there I stopped. So the um, shifting yarn, shifting, what am I saying? Self-striping yarn, it kind of looks like an ombre on this one. I don't really like the pale purple with the gray. The reason why I picked this yarn is because it has the gray in it. So this is Felici. The colorway is Grape Gatsby. 
good name. So I wanted to do that. So I pulled out, did a little bit of yarn management and started a second one. So Tristan's class, cause it's kindergarten, they have the main teacher and then they have, they call them para, paras, paraprofessionals. Um, I really don't like that word for some reason. I just have this like guttural reaction. I hate it. So, um, and in our eyes, she's as much of a teacher as his main teacher. In fact, she's the more like loving one. She's the one that's going to give him the emotional support and help with that, whatever he needs. Not that he needs any, but you know, that was our experience with Roland. So anyways, so I want to give them both equivalent gifts, right? I, I know that there can be some class and politics about school teachers and all that, and I don't see it. I don't want to see it. So <sighs> that's my thing. <laughs> I'm not a teacher. I've never been a teacher. My aunt's a teacher, but she like she teaches fifth grade. There were no paraprofessionals at that point. So I don't know. Um, we'll just call her assistant teacher. And there's a student teacher in Tristan's classroom too. And there's a special needs teacher for one of the students and they're all learning sign language to speak to that student, which is so cute. I love it when he tells me words. And anyways, it's really sweet how much they include her. Um, so there's a lot of people in this classroom at any given moment for I think 17 kids. There are four, can be times when there are four adults in there. So um, it's great, <laughs> but I'm only knitting gifts for the two main teachers. Oh my God, what a tangent. I have a long show. I don't have time for this. Sorry, get back on track. Okay, so here's the second one. And yeah, I pulled out to a different point in the purple. And so it's more of the darker. And I think that'll be really nice. And I did cast on eight, four, four extra stitches. These are knit on size eights or nines, really big needles. So they go super fast, which is awesome. Here we go, supplies. Eight inch, uh, eight inch, size eights, 32s. And that's probably what I have here. So I made it a little bigger because uh, Miss McQuaid, the assistant teacher, is probably my height. So I want to make sure that these will fit her. And then I might just toss this one aside or uh, give it to the girls at the end of the street. They might actually like it uh, if I have enough of the gray to knit two pairs. Aside from this, right? I'm going to knit two pairs with this and then oh, maybe one more. So that's going. <laughs> and I will eventually get to the right amount of yardage just knitting these little fingerless mitts and I will add thumbs just a little thumb to all of them because I don't like it when fingerless mitts end like you just bind off stitches and cast on stitches I feel like it's not enough of a finished edge for me so there is that now we have to talk about works in progress of which I only have one so my needles have cleared and restocked and it's really not a lot going on. I know that the last episode went up in October and I completely spaced that I had this. So after I finished my last pair of DVD socks, I had some in-between time. So of course I pulled out my Baudelaire's. I turned a heel, fun, fun, fun. And can I tell you that this sock is covered in stitch markers and it makes the knitting 100% easier. These are super tiny, super, super, super small ones because the larger ones are fiddly and annoying on the tiny needles, size zero needles, but they really, really help here. I, I make them, but I always have scrappy leftovers. So I did want all my markers to match. I had some special blue and purple. Yeah, I made a set of these for the, knitting these socks in particular because I wanted it to be pretty and proceeded to lose almost all of them. <laughs> so that's the problem with tiny stitch markers. Well, that's the problem with any stitch markers. I know my couch must have about a hundred in it. <laughs> stitch mark eater. So these are from my mom. I'm using Opal. I had leftovers somewhere. Uh, I had leftovers from the first pair I knit, so I knit the foot with that, and then I purchased a new skein, and I started the heel with the new skein. So just to make sure that, I don't know, I want to use up the leftovers, but I don't want the two socks to be different. So what shows under mom's pants will be matching with the other one. So these are my bold layers. 
my fourth pair of Baudelaire's by Cookie A. I need to knit a fifth pair for me. So there's that. Finished object. I'm sorry, I don't have a picture. I finished St Steve's? Steve's twig beanie. If you're at Rhinebeck on Sunday, you will see him wearing it, I am sure. Although I think it's supposed to be in the 60s. Anyways, I finished that. I'll slap in a picture right here. So that was my F.O. Let me see. I wrote down some notes somewhere. I wrote lo notes lots of places. But do I know where they are? No, no, no. I don't know. Oh, yes, I do. I found it. <laughs> okay. So for Steve's hat, I knit it on size eight and I used 611 yards because I was holding fingering weight double. To knit that so just as a reminder for me for next time I will be doing at least making one more of those hats for him and one for Roland and possibly one for me because I think they're awesome so that sort of takes me into the next thing which is knit alongs as you know I've been doing the pigskin party right talked about that that's with the down cellar studios podcast uh, group on Ravelry. So much fun. You should definitely join in on that. And I've also been doing throughout the whole year Crafty Bingo with She Must Knit. So I've made an update for you on my Crafty Bingo. So here is my Crafty Bingo card for the She Must Knit podcast. So it's 25 goals to be completed in the year. And so far I've completed 11 of them. So I've done five of ten hats so that one's on its way but not finished um i've done one of two cowls the birds and ships was my first one and then the waffle cowl will be my second one i had six pairs of socks on here and with the dvd sock club i'm doing great with that so um the peter max was actually my last completed pair so that's done checked off uh, two sweaters for the family. When I finished my Sunset Highway, that was the second one, so that's done. I completed Stash Dash 5K, which was my goal, so that's done. So what I have going right now, you can see where the hearts are, uh, a color work accessory, so my cowl will count for that, and two cowls, so as I said, the waffle will count for that. So I don't know if I'm even gonna get a bingo. I <laughs> so if I look across, starting with the column C, I can really make slippers before the year is over. There's no need not to. Um, moving to R, need to knit five more hats, so that should be easy to do, especially with Steve and the boys. And then the lace one, I put a little pumpkin on that too because the Baudelaire's I'm knitting right now should count. I don't know if I have two UFOs to finish. I should definitely check that out. Moving over to A, the... Um, 2017 something I queued in 2017 if I get that done then I'll have bingo across even though I wanted a blackout and then column F is um, the present I'm already knitting fingerless mitts for Roland's teacher so or Tristan's teacher so that should be an easy one to mark off and then column T is the one I wanted the most with upload all of my 2018 acquisitions and I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do that because October's almost done and I know November's gonna be crazy with the holidays and everything up ahead of me so disappointed I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that it would probably take me eight hours to get them all in so we'll see if I can devote a day to that but that is my bingo update. I just want to say thank you again to She Must Knit for hosting this awesome year-long knit-along. I have really enjoyed it, and I will definitely be doing it again. So Crafty Bingo takes me into dream knitting. What are you dream knitting? I'll tell you what I'm dream knitting. Um, you know a baby blanket I knit back in May? Well, I had to have finished in May. We had the blanket knit along. You remember that. Um, 
it's weird I don't really like it but then I also like the idea of foam on the top of my coffee so it's good so this is the skinny syrups pumpkin caramel flavor whipped foam so I'm guessing it's a seasonal offering um, but I like the foam on the top of my coffee so I'm gonna take a sip okay so there's that dream knitting okay <laughs> so I knit the the, the baby blanket was finally gifted and she has sent, sent me lots of pictures and tags and she loves it. It's perfect. Her husband, green is his favorite color and she's told me about half a dozen times to go sell them on Etsy, which I think is adorable, <laughs> but I'm not going to because um, that was the northeasterly pattern. I knit it with worsted and too much thinking. <laughs> it would have to be bigger repeats or the chevrons or I would have to do it as a chevron so it was rows across and not maybe do it as like different colors you know so you knit gray drop pick up green do it that way it would, might be easier than doing it up one side down up down in strips so uh, that's a thought I might do that but when Steve brought that to New York with him his last trip and gifted it to her, because she's now back from maternity leave, I felt bad, I didn't mail it, but that's the way it went. And um, he told me that one of his other coworkers had a baby girl that uh, he works with the husband. So he asked me to knit a baby sweater and um, hat, right? I gave him, I, have you ever done this before? I was like, okay, so what kind of gift do you think that Shaheen is worth? Is he worth 30 hours, which is a um, baby blanket and a hat? That's what we did for Nikita. Is he worth 15 hours? That's a baby sweater and a hat set. Is he worth, um, I think I said five, but really it wouldn't be. It would be like, well, maybe five for uh, a hat and booties. And Steve said, I think the sweater is a good one. So I'm going to do that very soon. Uh, definitely acrylic washable yarn. And I have all those Karen cakes in a bazillion colors. So I'll do one of those. But if I do that and I use a pattern that was queued before 2017, that would check off some boxes, right? It'd be a hat. It would be a old thing. So the... Um, 2017 is the bingo item I want to do. There we go. Do first or do the most so that I do connect a row. So I'm also, I mentioned hats. So that's added to my shopping list for this coming weekend. And what else? There was something else I feel like I wanted to cast on. I don't know, but I really love this coffee. <laughs> I never drink hot coffee. I'm a cold coffee person, but man, this is good and toasty on this windy rainy day so that's my dream knitting for right now so uh shop talk shop talk so there is an update that went live and i'm gonna have a video for you with that but here we go early october update for a door knit we are feeling that fall weather and the need for cozy warmth so the leaves and the acorns are falling from the trees. Thanksgiving is around the corner with this pumpkin and all the fixings. And when the snow flies, you wanna come in for a nice cup of hot cocoa. But if you go out, you're gonna to wanna to wear your winter hat and your mittens, especially if you're going to build a snowman. <laughs> Moving on from that into superheroes, we've got Batman. <laughs> and it was time for some more updated Star Trek. So first is the Enterprise set, and next is the Discovery set. We're also offering the keepers for the different command badges or communicators. Are you ready for some bags? First up, we've added a Ravenclaw project bag and notions pouch to the shop. Hufflepuff has always been popular. We're restocked on notions pouches of that. And we have this Slytherin themed notions pouch, Gryffindor to follow. 
Also added the Bills, Buffalo Bills project bag in the equator size. And a special request came through for Yankees and I thought everyone else might like some Yankees. The fire trucks and polka dots are back in stock in the shop. And if you're more subtle with the fire trucks on the inside, this polka dot set is also back. We made extra large markers with a holiday theme. So these work for your needles eight to 11. And this is the third set we have, the final set, a little summary there. Adding more football all the time. So the Rams and the Chicago Bears have found their way into the shop. Our Seahawks are among the most popular, so we added one more offering with a glitter heart. And moving into baseball, I know it's a little late for that, but go Astros! So we added a Houston set as well. And if that wasn't enough to entice you, select items are up to 60% off in the shop. Come check them out. And remember, the more you spend, the more you save. This is our Rhinebeck sale for those who can't make the trip. Thanks for watching and happy October. But I also have a couple new things that haven't made their way in yet, but they will very soon. And I wanted to share them with you because I'm completely smitten. So here is the first one. Christmas is coming and winter, but we didn't want to go um, super heavy Christmas. We wanted to go more winter themed so that it could your usage could extend into January or February. So this is one of our day-to-day -day sizes. This is our smallest. This is our sock size. A um, little bigger than a sock, but so it has the pink trees and it says be filled with wonder, be touched by peace. I think it's so pretty. And then on the inside it has coordinating mitten fabric. Can you see that? Presents and mittens and pine cones. So really, really cute with a contrast blue. And then the other one, there's only one of these because we made two <laughs> and I took the other one. Um, actually, we made one of this style that's going to be mine. But this is, I think, perfect for a teacher. One, two, three, ABC. So uh, that's the outside, fun contrasting. And then the inside is that same green. So both of these will be available in the next week and they will have um, Notions pouches that match. So our Notions pouches are getting a little bigger, right? I accidentally bought a bunch of five, size five zippers, so we've been using those up. I, ideally, I want Notions pouches that are five by seven. So, you know, five by seven long. So we're getting there. So the shop is slowly shifting over to larger Notions pouches, in case you're wondering. Okay. Now, this has been crazy additions. Well, this has been a crazy long episode for sure. I'm gonna shoot myself editing, I just know it. But it's been so long and I had so much to say. So, let's talk about new yarn. This is the last bit of new yarn. When Pigskin Party started, I bought a lot of yarn from the sponsors because I wanted to knit with their yarn and get points because points are so exciting. That brings me to the title of the show, which is Small Projects, Quick Finishes, quick like you get that high of finishing something and scoring points like maximizing my points and seeing what's the most I can get out of something makes the knitting even more fun. It does the only downside to this kind of knitting project knitting scheme is that I am having to spend a lot more time thinking about my knitting right searching for patterns trying to make a yarn fit with a pattern um, and not so much focused on what the product is that I want out of it, right? So I'm, I'm knitting things like those fingerless mitts. I probably would not have picked that pattern and I probably would not, I might have knit her fingerless mitts. I think mitts are a good gift for teachers. Um, socks are good too, especially with churning out 12 pairs in a year. I'm gonna have to start gifting more socks. So anyways, um, yeah, so I'm knitting that pattern. I might not have chosen it, but it's fine, I'm making it work. So there's a lot of making it work, but then feeling satisfied that these quick little things are finished. So uh, sweater knitting is awesome. I want to knit more sweaters, and I'm sure I will in like next year, <laughs> in 2020, I want my size to stabilize, right? Right now I'm at 72 pounds down, and I've got another 25 to go. 
so I'm gonna get where I'm gonna be or close and then knit sweaters because it's really sad to go in my closet and take out some of my favorite sweaters and they're, I can't wear them. I've been living in my Sunset Highway because the fingering weight is so snug, like the sleeves are really tight fit and the body of it is fine. It's, it's probably like this kind of fit, but I love the snug sleeves. It's keeping me so warm. So anyways, um, yeah. I've also been able to pull out some sweaters that I couldn't wear because I outgrew them and now I've ungrown them. So, okay, new yarn. That's what we were on. Acquisitions, additions, whatever you want to call it. So this is the last batch that I ordered and this is from my beloved Sun Soaked Yarns. Hi Jody, if you're watching. Um, when I ordered this, I did order two mystery sale sock skeins. So tell her the color and like I picked a red and a gray and she picked whatever. So uh, the first one that she picked was for red was is called Blazin. It's a perfect autumn color. It is um, one of those colors that I search for. <laughs> I don't know why, when I started knitting, I knit a pair of Cherry Tree Hill socks in a color very much like this, a little more neon, and I love them, but I wore right through them. They, I think they were 100% merino or something. This is 80-20 merino nylon, so super wash. So these should be make wonderful socks. And I've wanted to replace them since I wore through them because I love them. I should probably knit the same pattern, although I remember having a Pico hem. I think it was out of, um, oh, was that Vogue? No, Interweave's book of like 25 socks. I was trying to knit through that book and I think I got six or seven before I lost interest. So the next color that she picked because she knows me, <laughs> it's not Hocus Pocus, which I've just slayed that skein. This is called Spooky Night. So it's gray instead of purple or it looks pretty close to me the other one so maybe it was hocus pocus with a mistake and it, she's calling it gray i don't know but it's beautiful it's stellina 75 percent super wash 20 percent nylon five percent stellina maybe these are what my baudelaire's need to be in because i've got a hat i've got a cowl what else can i do i'm not going to do a shawl that would be too much and then i wanted a worsted weight i haven't tried her worsted weight yarn before so this is called teal with black <laughs> oh, she sent me one of those wool packs to sew onto a hat. That's fun. I love that. I don't want to lose that. This is the Panthers colorway. That's why I picked it. Panthers football team. So worsted weight. How many yards? 213 yards. It's beautiful. And Jody also offers the caking service. So most people get them in skeins. I like cakes. Then I don't have to do it. It, I, it removes a hurdle of my knitting it and she cakes really really loose so the yarn is not damaged if it sits for a while so those are the new additions I love them I think we're up to life the boys so the boys are good um, yeah we're good not too much to say about the boys Tristan was home yesterday homesick and Monday, Tuesday, I didn't feel good. And so today is Thursday and it's the first day this week that I'm like hitting my stride. That's why I'm drinking all this coffee because I'm like, okay, I've got stuff to do, let's do it. Um, <laughs> so he was homesick, he's doing better today, bit of a cough. Uh, yeah, Ro is still big on soccer. He played three games last week and, and lost all three. One of them was really close, it was a, a tie up until his goalie stopped a ball, but it was raining and the ball slipped out of his hands and rolled in through his legs. And like he had had control of it. So that was a really sad loss on that one. But the season's almost over and then we'll switch to indoor soccer and both boys are doing indoor soccer. So keep them running. That's my motto, right? And yes, maybe I'm living vicariously through them. But I think that if they stay running and active a couple days after school, it's a good habit to teach them for later in life, right? If they're just used to doing this. That's my thought anyways. Um, yeah, so that's the boys. Uh, what else? My cousin came last weekend. It was fun to have her around as always. 
and Steve was in New York the week before, so that was a little, little rough on me. I locked, no, I didn't do it. I drove the car to the bus stop with the boys. The boys played in our car and our neighbor's car, right? They have a, we both have a kindergartner and a third grader. Hers are girls, mine are boys. And so they were in and out of the cars and playing and having a great old time. And the bus comes and the boys get on the bus. All the kids get on the bus. We wave goodbye. I go to open my car door and my keys and my phone are locked in my car. Oy. So the other mom lets me use her phone. Her name is Stephanie, by the way. So I can't remember my parents' phone number. I don't know either of their phones off the top of my head. And the only two numbers I know are Steve and mine. Steve is in New York. So I text Steve from a number he does not know. Steve, this is Stephanie, your wife. <laughs> I'm locked out of the car. Please, you know, call Progressive. And I oh wait. And I'm standing there and it's freezing cold and I've got on three quarter length sleeves and a vest and it's, I'm not dressed for that temperature weather. But luckily I had not locked the house. So I walk back down the street, come in the house as I'm like, I can't rest. I can't do anything. I can't focus. Like I was such a spaz about it. But I remembered that sometimes you can chat online with big companies. So I thought, I'll chat with Progressive. Maybe I can do it. So I do that. They send someone out. The guy comes. We spend 45 minutes out there in the cold. Again, I did not put my winter coat on for some reason. Freezing. And he can't get it open. It's He's got like this long wire thing trying to pop the locks. And he can't get the locks. He can't pull out my key. He can't do the front either of the front, who's a very sweet man, but he was very frustrated that he couldn't get it. So then I come back and I realized that the boy's phone is on Wi-Fi. And Apple products, I can FaceTime or message maybe, I wasn't sure, FaceTime at least with other Apples over Wi-Fi. So I FaceTimed to my parents. <laughs> I'm like, guys, he said I need a locksmith. So, my dad, I love him to pieces, but he's not the most um, speedy or straightforward person, <laughs> you know? He's a meanderer. So he calls Progressive for me. He's not on our car insurance, obviously, so I don't even know if they'll help him. But he calls them, we need a locksmith. Okay, they tell him the locksmith is there. So at this point, it's been three hours. I look out, he hangs up, calls me, FaceTimes me. Neither one of us have ever FaceTimed with each other before, by the way. So it's all new to us, but we did good. I look out the window because I can see the bus stop. No one's at my car, but they said my car was unlocked. So, okay. So I go walking down there. Yep, my car is unlocked. The locksmith had come at some point <laughs> between the like hour. He came. I don't know how he got here so fast, did it and left. But my car was unlocked and I got to come home. So that was good. And I found my phone, which was shoved in between the car seats in the back. So moral of the story is do not get out of the car and leave your keys in it. Do not let the kids play in the cars because my car, the driver's side can't lock if the keys are in the ignition. So someone had to manually, like the auto lock won't work. So somebody had to manually lock it. So that was my hey good morning it's 55 degrees and of course i want to sit outside yes and look at my fashionable pants Woohoo! <laughs> and this is my knitting the baracha socks by knitters brewing company go check them out See those white tents over there on the edge? Just past that is where we got married. But today, my Steve and the boys are off searching for sea glass somewhere over there. 
I walked out this far with a camp chair. And I brought my knitting. Of course I did. So let me get my finger out of the way. <laughs> Sorry about that. There's my bag I brought. And in it, I brought my photo lamp socks. Yay! So this is the first sock. Love those cables. Look at them in the sun. So pretty. Or is it lace? It's lace. They're not pretty. Um, but I am doing my increases and I'm about to turn the heel. So, a wonderful way to spend a Saturday afternoon sitting and knitting by the ocean. At least for half an hour. I'll get some peace and quiet. Hope you're enjoying the sounds.